So what is good my guys and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm sorry it has been a while since I last uploaded but I had exams at the end of last semester which did take out a couple of weeks of my time and then as you would have seen if you follow my Instagram I've actually spent the last month and a bit over in Africa doing some traveling. Uh, yes I did attempt to vlog it, um, it's probably not the best but I am editing it at the moment so you will get to see some of the footage from that trip. But before I spoil it in the vlogs, today I just want to show you guys some of the recent, latest and greatest pieces that I've been wearing. You might have already seen a fair few of these on Instagram already if you follow me there, um, as I have posted quite a few photos when we were overseas of me wearing these pieces. I have kind of tried to experiment a little bit more and redefine my personal style a bit, um, just so that it's a little more unique. And you can see that it was a little bit more experimental in these pieces that I bought, but I really enjoyed it and you'll see that in today's video. So starting with tops, guys, I have three tops here that I'm going to show you today. So the first one off the rack is going to be this vintage Raiders tee. Now, as an Australian, I don't really know all that much about the NFL, but for some reason, I'm always drawn to cool vintage sportswear and sports team pieces. Um, and I just think they're cool. And this is one of them. Now, I am more aware of who the Raiders are. Um, as I have seen that they have done collaborations with brands such as Supreme, which does confuse me a little how just one team got to club with Supreme, whereas in the NBA, the whole league club with Supreme, but in the NFL, it's just one team. I don't really see how that's fair, but I guess that's just how it was. Anyway, this tee is actually from 1996, and you can see it says down there on the corner. I do like that they have a little timestamp there just when you buy vintage stuff, so you can actually know that it is genuinely vintage. And you can see that it has really faded and aged quite well um, for it being, what, how many years old would that be now? Over 20 years old. Now, when I was looking for a shirt like this, I do usually go for like an XL or 2XL just so that it is slightly oversized as sometimes when you get vintage shirts, they have shrunk from the original sizing. Um, so I do go upper size when looking for the vintage shirts just so they do have that oversized fit. Um, and it does have quite a nice oversized fit. I just feel like like the neck hole here has just been stretched quite a lot and it does have kind of fit weird around my neck and on my collarbones. I know it's just something strange that I noticed, but otherwise it is fitting like quite perfect in exactly how I was looking for it to fit when I bought it. But you know, what can you expect from vintage tees? They have been worn, they have been stretched, they've been used. And so that's just something that, you know, you gotta be mindful of when you're buying vintage tees. But anyways, that is just something minor. I really like wearing this shirt and I do love the aged look on it. Um, and yeah, so let's move on to the next one. And so the next shirt, as I said before, is actually also bought a frail. The strange thing is that I actually bought it off an Aussie bloke. And that's strange because it is actually a Kissimmee Cobras tee, uh, another sportswear tee. And I didn't really know too much about the Cobras or Kissimmee as a place. And so I did have to do some research to figure out who it is and where they're from. Um, and I originally thought Kissimmee was a bit of a funny name, but then I remembered that Australia has towns such as Grong Grong and Na Na Goon. So um, it wasn't really that weird after all. Anyway, for anyone who hasn't already determined it, Kissimmee Cobras are a baseball team and they did play in the major baseball league in America. Um, and they're based um, in the state of Florida. I guess the town or city of Kissimmee is in Florida. But the big thing is that the team doesn't actually exist anymore. Probably why I haven't heard of them before. They actually folded in the year 2000. Um, I didn't really get to know why, but Regardless, uh, this tee is just super sick. I really love the graphic. And I think it's also aged really well. Now, when you're looking at this tee, just the colors and like the graphic is just probably the best part of it. And that's really what drew me to it in the first place. Um, the crazy thing about it was because I did buy it from an Aussie boy. I don't know how he managed to get it, but I'm super glad that he did have it as I didn't have to pay a shit ton of postage. The tee is also from 1996 and it is a little stamp down there telling you that it is from 1996, like I said before, with the Raiders tee, a nice little touch. Uh, I just think the graphic has aged really well for something that is over 20 years old. I don't know if this shirt was, you know, still new after the team had folded, and so that's why it's been kept so well. But regardless, I just think it's a super nice shirt. So yeah, that is the uh, Kiss Me Cobras t-shirt that I got. Um, it's probably one of my favorite t-shirts that I own at the moment. I did originally think that it was going to be black with the, with the graphic, but it's actually a, a more of a navy color, which I don't mind, but I think black is probably a little easier to wear and might have looked a little bit better. Uh, but regardless, still an absolute fire t-shirt. And so the last top that I have to show you guys is actually a jacket. It is a big puffer jacket by a brand called Mint Crew. It's winter here currently in the Southern Hemisphere and it was winter over in 
Africa and obviously in the desert in Africa, it gets very cold at night. And so I needed a much bigger jacket than the ones I currently have here. Um, and so I went with this one. I do really like the um, like silhouette of the jacket. There's a lot of puffer jackets out there which have like really small like ribs, like puffs, I guess, on the puffer jacket. I was looking for something which is a little more exaggerated and this has like the big exaggerated um, puffs or folds, I don't know what you would call it, a puffer jacket. Um, and it is really just like really kind of chunky and bulky and it keeps me very warm. I was kind of looking for an alternative to the North Face and Uptoos jackets. Those are just way too expensive for me to justify owning, especially when we're living uh, here in Wollongong where it doesn't really get that cold for a jacket this big. Um, and I wasn't gonna go spend $400, $500 on a jacket like that. So this was a great alternative as I think it only cost me about, I think it was retailed for 150 US on their site, but they had a sale and so I got it for about um, 80 US. So it was quite a good buy in that regard. So unlike some other puffer jackets, it does have like this shiny kind of smooth, like black color, which I really feel is unique to this kind of jacket. I don't know what Mink Crew done to get the nylon coloring like this, but it does look really sick. Um, and it kind of reminds me of what Moncler um, and Palm Angels did, I think. They had those big, crazy, over-exaggerated jackets, which had a lot of shine to them. I also do like that it does have a synthetic feeling, which does also make it cheaper, uh, but it does also make me not feel so worried when wearing it as jackets with like a down feeling that are very expensive. Um, they're very hard to like kind of take care of because if it gets dirty, it's hard to wash because you can't wash the feathers in the washing machine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it has been really nice to have a little less, you know, pressure to, you know, it's a little less fragile to own a jacket like this, especially when we were traveling um, and I didn't have to worry so much about feeding it around or just shoving it in a backpack. Uh, there's not much else to it really. Um, it has one big main zip and then it has a little kangaroo pocket in the side. Uh, I think it has a little couple of little pockets on the inside of the breast as well. Um, so plenty of storage and yeah, just you know, simple jacket. I don't know if they sell it anymore, but I'll let you guys know in the description. But yeah, super sick, super glad I picked it up. Very helpful when we were traveling in Africa. And yeah, keep me nice and warm. So now I'm gonna move on to pants or bottoms. I have three um, bottoms, I guess. I have one pair of pants and two pairs of shorts. The first one is actually gonna be this pair of Rothko you know, forest camo cargo pants. Obviously you guys would have seen by now, cargo pants are very in at the moment and almost every band has been dropping them. Rothko are like the OG when it comes to um, cargo pants, just because they are like a tactical hunting kind of company and they have been producing pants like this for a tactical hunting, you know, market more say than street rail fashion wise. Um, and they have been doing it for a while now. Um, and I guess the trends have kind of just rode the wave of what they've been doing. So I bought these specifically for our trip to Africa. I just thought it'd be sick to get some photos, you know, out in the African forest, you know, jungle, whatever. Um, in the forest cargo, I just thought it'd be something cool. And you can check those out on my Instagram. I do have a couple. But besides from getting nice photos, I've actually found out that these cargoes have a really, really nice fit and just overall are a really nice pair of pants to wear any day, um, regardless of, you know, the camo coloring. I was a little concerned when I um, bought these because I did see somewhere that in some African countries that it's like illegal to wear camo, but um, turns out that was just, you know, back in the day when they're having some wars on, it was a bit bad. And so, yeah, I was actually fine to wear these over there, which is sick. Now, as for the cargo themselves, as I said before, Rothko is kind of like a military kind of hunting wear brand, um, and they have been designed with that intent. And you can see that as they do have quite a lot of fit adjustment. They have these little uh, like ratchety, like pull tab straps on the side, which makes it really easy to get the perfect fit around your waist. And they also do have little ties in the ankles so they don't get caught around your shoes, which I think is super useful when it comes to making sure that they fit correctly. And it was just really nice to have that kind of adjustment um, as they did fit perfectly in that regard. They are quite wide and quite loose around the legs. And that was also quite a bonus as whenever I was on the plane, I didn't have any like sweatpants or anything with me. So these are my go-to pair of pants and they're just so comfy to wear. Um, as the fit is perfect and they are quite loose around the legs. Unlike a like, really tight pair of denim, which will get like kind of annoying after an hour or two. These are just perfect and my go-to flying pants. Now, after getting these camo cargo pants, I actually went a little camo crazy and bought two pairs of camo shorts as I needed some more shorts for when we went to the hotter climates of countries such as Mauritius and Zanzibar. Um, and so, yeah, I need some more shorts. So the first pair I wanna show you guys is also by Rothko and these are just like a fire camo or like an orange camo. 
Um, they are cargo shorts. They're pretty much exactly the same as the cargo pants, except we're just cut a bit shorter. They have the same waist adjustment um, and they do have the same kind of pockets on the uh, waist on the hips. So these shorts are probably a little bit more experimental for me. Um, I was a little unsure when I got them, but when I started to pair them with some outfits, I kind of started to really enjoy owning them. They are probably not for everyone and I don't really know, you know how much versatility they have in an outfit. Um, as I was mostly pairing them just with like a black shirt or a gray shirt um, and you know, basic sneakers. Um, but otherwise I do think they're quite unique and I do like them. What inspired me to get these actually was I did see quite a lot of posts on Instagram um, of similar things. And so I decided to give it a go. And it turns out I did like it. So if you guys are ever on the edge of, you know, trying to give something a go, just find a nice kind of cheapish alternative and then see if you like it. If you don't like it, then move it on. And if you do like it, then you found a really nice new piece for your wardrobe. So let's move on to the second pair of shorts that I got. And so the next uh, pair of shorts are these Camo Swim Shorts by Stussy. Uh, now, basically, I really needed swim shorts before we went on our trip, and I didn't have a whole lot of cash at the time as I had, you know, just taken a couple of weeks off um, to study for my exams. And so I went with Stussy, which is a pretty, you know, relatively easily available brand. Um, they do actually make quite a few nice pieces, and so I picked up these shorts. So they're pretty good, you know, they're nothing super special. I do like the pattern and the color of them and I do like how they fit, you know, for swim shorts, I guess they are a pretty good fit. Basically nothing too, you know, special about them. They were probably about 30 or 40 Australian dollars, I don't quite remember. But yeah, just pretty basic shorts and something else that I really enjoyed wearing. And so that wraps up all the clothing pieces that I bought. So now moving on to sneakers. Actually, the only pair of sneakers I've managed to get this entire year has been this pair of Yeezy 700s in the Tempra colorway that I was actually fortunate enough to get for my birthday from Susie. Now these are the first ever pair of 700s that I've ever gotten or even worn. I haven't even tried any on before. And I can tell you guys right now that if you have not tried a Yeezy 700, then you are missing out because these shoes are one of the most comfortable shoes that I've ever worn, I swear to God. If you guys haven't tried these out, there's just so many colorways releasing that they're not even that hard to get anymore. And I would definitely recommend you guys you know, looking into getting a pair. I know they are a bit expensive, but they are just such a good sneaker. Like they look really nice and they do feel so nice to wear that they are probably one of the nicest sneakers I've ever gotten, actually, to be honest. I actually got these in a size 12, which is my true size, um, but I would probably recommend going up half a size. Like these don't fit too bad, but my toe, my big toe does reach the end of the toe box, which, you know, does feel a little bit off. And so I probably would go half a size up, but as always, if you can try it on, that would always be best. Um, but if you're buying them online, my best recommendation would try and get a half size bigger than your true size. Now, when these shoes were releasing, people were all kinds of upset as they kind of thought that these shoes were very similar to the Geodes and to a bunch of other 700 pairs that he already released. Um, I really liked this pair personally, just because of like the shades, colors, nothing too like crazy. But I also liked that I did see him wearing this model on the David Letterman thing on Netflix and that kind of did persuade me a little bit to get them. It's like when I swear to get that, bro. As I couldn't find too many good, you know, on feet picks before they released. But anyways, yeah, I really do like the colors. I do think the colors are really nice and it does work for this shoe. Um, I would have liked for the 3M to light up on the side. It probably doesn't light up as much as other colorways. And you kind of see the differences in how the paneling is done on these shoes when you look at a comparison of them too. This has a little bit more suede and leather, I think compared to like the geode, which does have kind of like a flush face with that 3M on the side. Now these are a really great pickup before I went to Africa is these colors and these tones are perfect over when we we're in the Namibian desert. Um, and I would definitely recommend if anyone who's on the fence about getting these to give them a go. Um, and if you want to see any more photos of these, you can definitely check out my Instagram because I've been posting a lot of them as they did get quite a lot of wear over there when we were in Africa. Um, so yeah, that's the Yeezy 700 Tempera. Um, super clean shoe and I'm super happy that I got them. So now moving on to accessories, I have two pieces to show you guys. First and foremost, I have a pair of sunglasses. They are by Oakley. And if you would have seen my 2019 trend prediction video that I put out at the start of this year, I did mention that cycling glasses were becoming a trend um, throughout this year. And I've actually bought into this trend um, as I did like it. And I did mention that in the video. Um, and I bought a pair of these Oakley jaw breakers. Originally intended as cycling glasses. Come on, please focus. They are just super sleek, super fast. And yeah, 
Now they do not just look super cool, they are actually super functional as they were designed with the intent to be used for cycling, like professional level cycling. Now these belts have extendable arms on the back so you can change it to be shorter or longer depending on how it feels and what feels best for you guys when you sit them on your face. Um, they also have interchangeable lenses, so if you want to get a new pair of lenses, say one with like a reddish kind of tint or a blue kind of tint, you can just open up the entire frame, which I'll show you in a video now, and just take the lenses out and then put a new set of lenses in. Now, as I said before, I needed to get kind of a neutral colour, which will go with all the outfits that I was taking with me on our trip. And so I actually went with like a kind of black mirrored kind of lens that came with this frame. Um, and I've also been super stoked on that because I do like the kind of mirrored look um, where you can't see the person's eyes through the glasses. And so these are the perfect for that look. Now, as I said before, I had actually seen these quite a lot um, on Instagram before, um, even though they are probably a little bit more experimental from my perspective. I was kind of just sick of seeing classic like Aviator and Wayfarer sil silhouettes everywhere. And I couldn't find any more unique sunglasses that I would just know would fit well. My dad actually owns a pair of these and he actually uses them for cycling so I was able to try them on to see what I thought of them before buying them. Um, they are probably a little different and I understand that but like I said I'm trying to experiment more and see what I like. So if you guys are looking for a more unique silhouette I would definitely recommend looking into more sports specific glasses as there are a lot of crazy silhouettes out there. I kind of feel like men's sunglasses lack in silhouette options. I see women have so many more varieties of glasses that they can choose from. Um, and so I'm really kind of looking for new kind of silhouettes and new versions of glasses that I can wear. As summer is coming up for me, I'm kind of considering more what I'll be wearing into the, you know, the summer period for myself. So now moving on to the last or one of the last items of today's video, I actually got a new chain from an Aussie designer that goes under the brand of Statement VIP. Yeah. Now, originally I was looking for something which had a little bit more of a Cuban style, like a thicker length. Um, that was a little bit of a shorter necklace that I could stack nicely with the other chain that I'm currently wearing now. Um, but I couldn't actually find anything which was like of a reasonable price and exactly what I was looking for. So I decided to invest in a fellow Aussie designer and pick up one of his chains. Uh, this isn't specifically a uh, Cuban link. It is called a flat link and you can see that as it's not quite as you know flat and chiseled down as a Cuban link would be. Uh, but yeah, so I decided to give them a run and see how they go. Cost me around 80 Australian dollars, which isn't too bad uh, considering some of the prices of Cuban chains and it is still made out of stainless steel, so it's not gonna rust or wear on you um, when you're wearing it out and about. Um, I got the 18 inch length version. Um, I know that there was a 19 inch version and a 16 inch version. I didn't wanna go with the 19 just because I was worried that it was gonna fit too long and, and it was just not gonna fit the way I wanted it. So I went with the 18 inch thinking it would be safer, but I actually found out that the 18 was kind of too tight for the style I was looking for. Um, and it didn't really nest well with my other chain. It's kind of getting close to when we had to go on our trip and I didn't really have time to send this back and then exchange it for the 19 inch version. So what I did is I went down the road to Bunnings and I picked up this little stainless steel quick link thing. Um, it has a little threaded part on here, so you can just undo it and then take it off if you want to. Uh, let me show you. See there? Or you can just thread it back on. And it adds about an extra inch to the length of the chain in total. And that extra inch has actually made it fit perfect and exactly how I intended it to fit. And so that's just kind of the solution I went with. So as you can see, the chain also has like this huge, enormous closure clip. Um, which is kind of obnoxious almost compared to the size of the chain. I think the original design intention behind it was so that you would wear it with the clip facing forwards and then that would be like the centerpiece of the chain itself. Now that wasn't the style I was looking for, but I just throw it around the back and I actually don't notice it at all. Um, and it also works quite well with the quick link as it is, you know, big enough and easy enough to find that hole so you can do it up easily yourself. Now another good thing I did find out with the uh, quick link solution to my uh, chain length issue is that if you want to um, you know, go full e-boy and attach the chains to your belt loops on your pants, then this quick link enables you to do that as obviously with the chain, you'll only have one clip and then one ring to end. Now I did experiment with this a little bit and I didn't really find it to be a style that I enjoyed. So I kind of ditched it, but if you're into that, then it's definitely an option. If you want to try and multi-purpose your chains, just grab a quick link um, and then you can just link any you know normal round link to it 
and then you can use the ordinary links to attach it to your pants. Now this is my first chain of this kind of thicker length kind of style and I have really enjoyed it and it has been a good introductory piece into wearing bigger pieces of jewellery. Now if you yourself are looking to get into jewellery pieces like some bigger jewellery pieces like this and you're looking to experiment with some more um, accessories I guess regarding to um, silver jewellery then I would definitely recommend going and checking out statement.bop's website um, as they do have quite a, a big range of things that you can choose from. That's actually what I did and I really enjoyed you know wearing this piece. Ideally still I probably look for something which has a bit more of a flatter Cuban link but um, before I managed to find something that is that I really enjoyed wearing this. So before I sign off on today's video I just want to give a quick shout out to another Aussie brand who go by the name of Third Chapter. Before I went on my trip, they were actually nice enough to send me one of their new baseball caps from their latest collection, which is just released. Um, they haven't asked me to say anything, like this is all just coming from me, but I just wanted to take a quick minute to mention that I do like to see Aussie streetwear brands putting in work, and I do like to support new upcoming streetwear brands, which um, are just trying to you know do something new. And so if you guys want to look into um, trying out some new pieces for a new brand, definitely go check out Third Chapter. I'll throw their link in the description just because, you know, they're a bunch of nice blokes there and they're working hard and I do respect their effort. Um, and yeah. So guys, that wraps up the video from me today. Sorry again for how long it's been since I last uploaded, uh, but whilst I've been studying and working and doing a bit of family stuff, it's been a bit of a juggle and I've kind of been doing what I can with the time that I have. Um, in regards to making content for the channel. And with that being said, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's currently subscribed to the channel as we just passed 900 subscribers and we are almost at that big 1K. Um, and that is just a huge milestone and has been something that I've been aiming for over the past two years of running this channel. So as we are so close to that 1K sub mark, I think I might have mentioned it in a video before that once we reach that 1,000 subs, I'd really love to do a Q&A video and kind of share more with you guys as to who I am. Um, so if you guys want to know anything about me or know my opinion on anything, then feel free to just leave a comment on this video or, you know, DM me on Instagram or anything. Um, and then I'll put it all together in a big video once you reach 1000 subs and I'll answer all your guys' questions. Um, so if you want to ask, ask me anything, feel free to just comment below. Now, as always, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to go down below and smash that subscribe button as you don't want to miss out on any of the future content that I'm putting out. Um, also, if you want to see any of the behind the scenes stuff of what I'm doing, you know, in my day to day, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Instagram, which is just at Joshua Denner. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'm sorry again for how long it took me to produce, um, but I'll catch you in the next one. I've got a lot planned and I can't wait to do it. Thanks, guys. Peace.